a dawn raid to detain two asylum seekers and potentially deport them has been disrupted and blocked by protesters in Glasgow. Dawn raids are opposed by the Scottish government but are under the control of the UK Home Office. The raids were seen as particularly provocative because they took place on the morning of Eid. Now, we can take you through some footage. You've got people there gathering around the van, other people sitting in the street, and that means the immigration enforcement van cannot move on. You can see there, there are already police arriving to try and manage the situation. Now, that was an incredibly successful move for those 10 or so people you could see in that video to make, because after that scene, what you had was call outs on social media, hundreds and thousands even people sort of arrived to that street and ended up forming a cordon around the immigration removal van. It was not able to move for the scale of the protest and the type of protest that took place. And we can show you the following clip. Um, this is the a clip of the police ostensibly trying to make their way through the crowd to escort a paramedic. So at the end of that clip, you could see the policeman at the front telling the protesters about the paramedic and pointing and saying, that's why we we want to come through. Um, it's not, however, that clear um, that the police were needed to escort a paramedic through a non-violent protest. Now, according to some who are at the scene, the police may have been using the paramedic as an excuse to get amongst the protesters. Um, afterwards, the paramedic was let through without the police escort. What you could see there, there was the scale of the protest, lots of people sitting down to stop the police getting through, and you can see hundreds of people already outside that van. Now, not long after that clip we just showed you, lawyers addressed protesters and police, saying the only way the crowd would disperse is if immigration enforcement released the two men held in the van. <laughs> And it was confirmed the protest had been successful when the police released the following statement. In order to protect the safety, public health and well-being of all people involved in the detention and subsequent protest in Kenmore Street, Pollock Shields today, Police Scotland has, following a suitable risk assessment, taken the operational decision to release the men detained by UK Immigration Enforcement back into their community meantime. Um, that decision was announced to the crowd by lawyers present before the men were released. We have an agreement. It is in writing. These men will be released safely. They will not be arrested. There will be no enforcement action against them. And I have an agreement that they will then, the police will form a cordon around the van with myself and the two men. And then we will be walked to the mosque where they will be released. <laughs> An incredibly moving image of solidarity there. The, the men who were detained thanking the protesters who had prevented um, their detention. Um, now, one of those detainees, Lakvir Singh, spoke to ITV. Do you have anything that you want to say to the people who came to support you today? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. That's all the people. Thank you. Speaking in his native Punjabi, Lakvir then told us what happened. I was taken unannounced from my flat. They barged in and took me into the van. I was anxious and upset, wondering how I would be treated at the detention centre. I'm so happy that my fate brought me to live here in Glasgow, where the people are so connected that they'll come out onto the streets to help one of their own. Now, it's all a clear example of direct action getting the goods and the power of solidarity. 
What's also interesting is that the mainstream politicians across most of Scotland's parties, other than the Conservatives, spoke out against the raids. Very different to what you would likely see if that had happened in England. So Scottish Labour, the Greens and the SNP government all opposed the Home Office's actions on Thursday. After the police announced the release of the two detainees, Scotland's Justice Minister Hamza Youssef released this statement. To take this action at any time is unwelcome in Scotland. To do so in the heart of the Muslim community on the day of Eid, where there have been outbreaks of COVID, is reckless and dangerous health, and frankly looks like it was intended to provoke. I've spent hours, hours trying to get the Home Office to abandon their operation. First, they passed me off to a civil servant uh, when none of their eight ministers would take my call and be objected after that. They eventually gave us the most junior ranking Home Office minister to speak to the First Minister and I, and to say he was unhelpful, again, would be an understatement. Belligerently told us that they would continue to enforce uh, immigration law as they saw fit. Now, I'm pleased and delighted, in fact, that Police Scotland, who of course have operational independence, Police Scotland have taken the decision in the interest of public safety, in the interest of public health, to release these two individuals. But immigration policy is, of course, reserved to the Home Office. And although these two individuals, and I'm pleased they have been released uh, on this occasion, the hostile environment created by the UK government's immigration policies is something that is simply not welcome here in Scotland. And I will be urging the Home Secretary to speak to me uh, and the Home Office to speak to me and to engage with the Scottish Government so that we simply do not see a repeat of these scenes, but more importantly, to tell them that their hostile environment is just not welcome in Scotland. That was Hamza Youssef, the Justice Minister. Um, for Scotland. Now, you, you, you probably already um, have recognised that that's a very different way of speaking to the UK Home Office. Just to confirm that, a source at the Home Office told the BBC Newsnight's Lewis Goodall um, on Thursday night, it is completely unacceptable for a mob to stop the lawful removal of people living in our country illegally. We 100% back the front line in removing those with no right to be here. So a very dismissive, fairly unpleasant in my reading um, statement from the UK Home Office. Now to discuss um, the protests, I'm joined by Rosa Sali. Rosa was born in Iraqi Kurdistan and moved to Scotland as a refugee when she was 12 um, you were also at the protest yesterday. Rosa, thank you so much um, for joining us today. Hi, Michael. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, I was at the protest and uh, uh, very overwhelmed by the people uh, organizing and winning. Uh, I think it was a huge victory uh, for Glasgow and throughout the world. I think everyone's looking towards Glasgow. Yeah. And what was it like, the, the demonstration? I mean, it seemed to grow sort of exponentially, but it wasn't particularly organised, was my sense. Well, I mean, it couldn't have been organised because this was a, you know, a, a spontaneous protest, really, wasn't it? Someone just noticed a van in the street, put it on social media, and then it spread by word of mouth. And ultimately, you had yeah. you know, hundreds, potentially thousands of people blocking an immigration van. Yeah, I think uh, initially the van was um, stopped by uh, a man called Declan, um, which I've come aware of that he actually was under the van for uh, over eight hours. Um, it wasn't organized in such ways because everything was by social media and people were sharing videos that this is a removal actually happening right this moment. However, people were contacting each other to come along and support and stop the uh, enforcement by the Home Office. So uh, that kind of uh, organization actually happened after later on and community coming together. Uh, the neighborhood in that street in an Pollock, uh, uh, in, uh, in Pollock uh, Shields, they all came together. Um, and it's a very multicultural part of Glasgow and different communities live there. It was just wonderful how people, um, hundreds of people coming together, a shoulder to shoulder, standing against the uh, illegal enforcement, I would say, uh, of asylum seekers, because it seems that they didn't have any legal advice, uh, the two asylum seekers, 
And once we were there, we um, there were a legal advice actually given to the asylum seekers, and we tried to communicate through one of the police officer there at the, at the time to communicate and sign some forms so they can have legal representatives. You are, I mean, in, a, in an incredibly well placed to speak about the politics of migration in, in Scotland, because you, you arrived in Scotland as a child, as a, as a refugee. As I said in, in the introduction, you, you campaigned as a, as a school child to prevent one of your friends um, being deported. You now work for an SNP MP. You've stood to be an MSP. So you've you really know both sides of this equation. You know the politics of the SNP, the governing party, and you know what it's like to to be a refugee in, in, in Scotland. What can you tell me about the politics of, of migration in Scotland? And especially, I mean, from someone in, in London, from England watching all of this, it seems like whilst the SNP don't have control of the, the migration system, the politics of, of migration in Scotland it is much more humane than it is south of the border. Do you think that's a, a fair assessment? Yes, I think that's the first statement that you've made. Uh, our politics is much different and the SNP, of course, the party that I represent and support, um, I would say we want to create a system that is based on fairness and dignity where humans are treated uh, with human rights um, and there are no raids um, and there are no detention and uh, we have we have we have made statement that we will remove the Gavel detention centre once we become an independent country. Would the SNP, I suppose, just to, to clarify for 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 our audience, the SNP don't have control over migration policy. That's currently a competence held in Westminster, but obviously, um, the SNP want it ultimately in an independent Scotland, but presumably also in a in a devolved UK. If if the UK were to stay together, what would the SNP's policy? Be? Because, you know, lots of the opposition to what happened yesterday, some of it was, I suppose, somewhat ambiguous. Were they opposing it because it was on Eid? Were they opposing it because it was a dawn raid? Or were they opposing it because they oppose detention and deportations in, in, in principle? The final one would be the more, the more radical fundamental position. Is it your understanding that if the SNP had control over migration policy, they'd stop deportations in Scotland altogether? Yes, I would say that there will be no deportation in Scotland and there will be a humane system uh, based on human rights and dignity. Uh, a system where actually uh, the caseworker would uh, speak to uh, the asylum who's claiming uh, uh, asylum to stay in this country. So there will be more uh, communication between uh, uh, the asylum seeker and their caseworker. So it's more humane, more direct, more communication. At this moment in the current system, there is no communication between uh, the decision maker and the asylum person that's claiming asylum in this country. Um, so uh, there's a disconnect between uh, those uh, the people really in 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 that question. So it, it's very problematic the way the system is set up and. Unfortunately, I do not believe there will be any reform uh, because I, I have been experienced and you know, I, I came to this country as an asylum seeker and I'm grateful, you know, because of my friends and my community campaigning for me to stay here. Um, and it wasn't given to me that easily. And um, because of that, I think I see the the failure of the system, uh, the, of how it's flawed and uh, we need to fix it. However, I do not believe in fixing it because of the Tory government of Priti Patel. Um, they they meet they want to meet uh, targets of deportation, and um, it's it's just numbers to them. There is no human humanity um, in their system, um, and of course, uh, it is a hostile environment they are creating for many asylum seekers. Uh, at this moment, the immigration uh, uh, the immigration rules are becoming more restrictive uh, day by day. Uh, so, uh, if you go back ten years ago, uh, people could have uh, applied for leave to remain in this country in on indefinite leave uh, uh, if you stay in this country for ten years. However, now they have uh, extended to to twenty years. So uh, you can see that's just one example. There are many many examples. Even family reunion people 
people who've married abroad, spousal visa. If you're rich enough, you can marry a, a, someone from abroad. But if you're not rich enough, uh, then unfortunately, you cannot uh, you cannot fall in love with someone abroad. Uh, this is the uh, immigration system we have in place, and every aspect of it you look into, there's restrictions and barriers. Uh, and at the end of the day, is people's lives that have are being affected.